interestingly, when you study the uh, the data, people have been trying to encourage the um, participation of women and underrepresented minorities in scientific and engineering professions for two or three decades now. And when you look at what's been happening over that period of time, um, you see that you have a different issue. One thing, you can't treat everyone the same. For women, what you now see is just as many girls graduate from high school with just as good a capabilities in science and math as boys do. Um, so women have the fundamentals to choose a career in science and technology equal to that of men. So what you see is more women and young girls opting out, choosing other professions. And the, it's a very complex story as to why that is. It ranges from um, not really, a lot of women I think want to be part of helping professions and not realizing what a wonderful helping profession science and engineering is that you can actually design products to help the deaf um, communicate better, um, make people who are, are blind uh, lives easier to improve um, how we all receive our products and services, improve people's lives in a variety of ways. I'm not sure that that connection is always made in school. I know it wasn't when I was in school. It was presented as sort of dry facts that you had to memorize. And, and I think latching on to that excitement and what a difference you can make if you're in, in those careers. I also think that there are subtle and cultural barriers of, of image and um, a lot of the television and movie and popular images of people who do science and technology. They're either the evil genius or they're the nerd in the lab coat. And I think that um, the profession needs to really think about how to present a, a very positive image of the differences that these people make in people's lives um, to address that issue. Now, for underrepresented minorities, interestingly, the main challenge is getting more of those students into the college eligible population because the data will show that once uh, minority students uh, graduate from high school and move on to college, just as many underrepresented minority students choose bachelor's degrees in science and engineering as white students do. So it's a really critically important issue that that population um, be broadened and better represented in the college pool. And in addition, I think all the same issues that I was talking about for women with image and recognizing you know, how fun and exciting these careers are um, is also extremely important, but you've kind of got that extra barrier that some of those um, minority students may need extra help to be able to graduate from high school and have college as an option and, and have the ability to, to afford college. When I was working at the Commerce Department in the latter half of the 90s, it was um, a case study in the internet boom and what it did to needs in science and engineering professions. And in particular, business at that point in time considered that they had a shortage of highly qualified computer scientists and engineers. And whether or not labor economists would sit around and argue about whether or not there was really a shortage, but there was certainly a perceived shortage. And CEOs of very large companies were coming into the Commerce Secretary and saying, we cannot find enough workers to fill all these jobs, and they're going begging. So there was a big national focus where um, we in the administration traveled around the country. We did town hall meetings. We um, pulled together a lot of ideas and best practices of what people were doing around the country that just seemed to work, and looked at ways to maybe think about how you target um, people who might not otherwise be in these careers, and that included, included mid-career people, such as, for example, pe people leaving the military who might have um, really strong skill sets that could be easily retrained mid-career. That included um, looking at ways that the disabled could participate, um, and then looking at how you bring students through the pipeline and engage them and give them the information that they need to um, 
really want to participate in these careers. And GetTech was targeted really at middle school students. And the information that we had at the time showed that as early as sixth grade, many students were choosing to take themselves off of a path where they would be taking the most advanced math and science courses and then therefore would not be as well prepared for these careers by the time they got to college. So in GetTech we tried to do three things. One was we tried to engage them in a fun and exciting way so that they, this issue would kind of get onto the radar screen. Secondly, we tried to provide really concrete career information. Um, so we went around and we worked with the National Association of Manufacturers and looked at about 50 science and engineering careers, including we tried to find things like sound technician for traveling bands, <laughs> um, careers that you might not necessarily think of as a tech career. And, you know, amazingly, those folks have to have quite a bit of education, at least some of them, and, you know, make 50 or $60,000 a year. So for each career we highlighted, we tried to include what educational credentials you had to have, how long you had to stay in school, um, and how much money you could make uh, after you got out. And then the third thing that we tried to do was figure out ways that you could um, hook those kids up with real um, scientific and engineering role models. And we included some of that on a website where we had case studies of people who were just wonderful, like um, Stephanie Quolick from DuPont who inv invented Kevlar. And we had this wonderful resource there at the Commerce Department because we managed, on behalf of the President, the National Medal of Technology. So we had all these wonderful innovators who'd been recognized by the President. So we were able to look to those people as role models and as stories of what great careers you could have. Um, and then we were, tried to put some fun and excitement and games into the whole thing and also some serious career information. And it was it was delivered through a website and it was also delivered through public service announcements that that tried to encourage people to go to the website and uh, it was a lot of fun and we felt like um, it had it had some impact and it's still around today although it has changed its shape since uh, the year 2000 which is when I last last uh, launched the thing <laughs> mm -hmm.